And now back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. Take a call from Mark from Paul. Let's go to Paul. Paul, welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Thanks for for uh, your patience. How are you this morning? I'm busy. I'm fine. I'm I'm just trying to <laughs> solve questions and 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 deal and deal with uh, you know. I mean, cars are, are can be really fun, and then they can really uh, be perplexing. You've got an O2 Mercury wagon. Well, how may I help you? Uh, yeah, it's it's been a great car. I've got a. Uh, 204,000 miles on it. Wow. And right right now, just to give you a little bit of the, the most recent uh, repair history, I had um, a, uh, a fuel injector that went bad. Uh, so while I was in there, I decided to change all three on that front rail. Um, and then of course, I changed all the gaskets for the uh, upper manifold of above and below, and I changed all the O-rings on the other three um, uh, fuel injectors, injectors upper yeah. and lower. Yeah. I figured I'm there. I might as well be safe through the yeah. whole deal. Yeah, I like what I'm hearing. And then, and then I, everything back together again, and after a couple of days, I got a misfire. I got an engine light on, so I went and got a diagnostic, and it said misfire and a bunch of other things in cylinder four, which is uh, passenger front. Yeah, passenger side front cylinder. Okay. Uh, the way my the way my engine's configured. Um, so, uh, I went back in, took everything out, and I swapped out, swapped over the fuel injectors. I took one from one of the new ones from one of the other. Okay. Put it in there just to make sure it wasn't a bad yeah, fuel yeah, injector. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, That's cool. Okay. Now I got the engine light coming back on again, and um, I'm getting a fuel smell. There's no leaking fuel that I'm aware of. I looked all over, but I'm still getting a fuel smell that seems to be coming out of the in- exhaust when I'm like, like when I park the car, I feel I smell fuel. Wow. I, I you know what you may have. Well, well, uh, I've got a hard break, uh, Paul, and uh, I'm going to ask you to stay there. And Noel, I'll ask you to stay there as well, and. Uh, and, and folks, I'll uh, give you the opportunity to get in, Triple Eight Car Clinic, Triple Eight Two Two Seven Twenty Five Forty Six. And, and Paul, I've got some ideas there. I like where you're going with this, with uh, doing uh, step by step, and that's really the way you get from point A to point B, and, and finally the solution. And then when I come back, we will finish the conversation with Paul. And we're talking with uh, Paul, who has an O2 Mercury wagon. Uh, and Paul, you you put in some injectors, and then uh, you had the check engine a uh, 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 f- uh, four number four cylinder that was misfire. And while you were rechecking it, you moved some injectors around. And so basically, uh, and and to catch me up to speed, uh, y- the engine runs okay, but you just smell raw fuel. Is that what you're smelling uh, in in the in the car when you shut it off? Yes. Yeah. Um, just. Two other quick things. Um, I replaced all the plugs and all the wires while I was doing all that other work. I right. finished, figured I might as well just do the whole deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the other day, I pulled the spark plug out on number four, and it's coated with oil. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. The, 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 the new plug or the old plug? The, the, new, the new plug. So I pulled number five out, and I swapped them over. Okay. Um, and... I'm still getting the same issue. Yeah, well, well with that same cylinder. Uh, yeah. it, if we were to back up without having to repeat everything that we've, we've talked about in, in, as a courtesy to those listeners, but if we backed up, mm-hmm. what was your original reason for uh, starting to work on the car? Um, I was getting a really strong fuel smell, and upon visual inspection, I saw one of the fuel injectors was leaking. Oh, so, okay, so, so, uh, and, and did you have a check engine light, and was that, you don't know if the, the plug was foul, but obviously if it was, you, you would have had a check engine light. Did you have a light on to start with? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Did you have a check engine light on to start with when you smelled the fuel back? No, back? no, I did not. Okay. Uh, it was just a very strong fuel smell, so, I, you know, I just visually went around, and I saw fuel leaking from that rail, that connects to the top of yeah, the injectors. Yeah. I, saw, I saw it leaking. You, you know, uh, you've done so many things, and, and I, I like the way that you transition from one uh, possibility or potential problem to another. Uh, I, I think that there's something here on the table that you haven't, obviously you haven't found, 
and or corrected or maybe even created. Uh, the oil fouling, uh, you've got, you got 200,000 miles on the engine. Uh, have you had any history of oil usage? Not, not until recently. I'm, I'm noticing that I'm burning a little bit more oil than usual. Yeah. Like, normally I'd go about a half a quart for, you know, five, 6,000 miles. Now it's it's... Of course. Well, here's here's what I think that uh, your next step would be. Uh, number one, go back to basics, uh, and 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 not, I'm not saying start over, but in essence, I'm I'm saying get a, a base, like you build a building. You got to build a foundation. The foundation that I would like for you to 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 share with me or yourself uh, during this next week or so is a run a compression test on the engine, and uh, to run a proper compression test, you must remove all spark plugs. You must open the throttle wide open and, and make sure that it's open, wide open. And then the engine should be uh, not cold. It should be at, uh, not necessarily 200 degrees because you can't work on it, but it, it should be warm. And you should turn the engine over no more than six revolutions. And the first pump, will, you know, you don't know where the piston is going to start when you put the compression gauge in. So the first poof will be uh, 75, 60, 70, whatever pounds, forget it. But the second one should be somewhere around 75 to 90, and the, the number six revolution should be whatever the final uh, pressure would be. Uh, and basically what I'm uh, cautioning you uh, to do, not to do, is to spin the engine over with a compression gauge until you get the pressure that you like. Ying, 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 ying. That's not the way you test it because the engine doesn't have that option. It, you know, it's either got to get one stroke and one stroke only. So. I'd like for you to run a compression test, and you could have, you, you've got your external fuel leak problem solved, but you could have, during this procedure, or during this some length of time, a problem with a ring, or a piston, or whatever inside the cylinder, and you know you've got oil on that plug, so that we need, we need to know how that cylinder compares with the other six. You, you, you got me? Yeah, got it. Okay, that that's what you want to do, and even even if that's not what ultimately it's going to take to fix the vehicle, one once we know what's on the inside of your engine, Paul, we'll know w w if we can fix th things by by not opening up, and we can fix things by on the outside. Does that make sense? Yes, it okay, does. Okay, okay, all right. Do do that. Uh, feel free to call me back. Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. Uh, yeah, nice to talk with you. 